Welcome to Gentle Moderate Kripala Yoga. Nice of you to join me, both here and there. Um, so, this class is very much about, um, as all Kripala classes are, but particularly this one, because some of the things that we're going to be doing tonight are a little bit more uh, focused on holding a little longer and just being in your body a little more um, in tune with exploring the, the relationship between breath and movement as well as perhaps a little bit of a challenge around holding and, and exploring in ways that perhaps you wouldn't have otherwise. But as always, listen to your body. Always listen to your body. That's your ultimate authority. I'm just here to offer ideas. So I invite you to close your eyes, to find a seated position that feels comfortable, to draw your attention to this container we call a body. to this vehicle that we have that enables us to travel the world. Mm. And as our body is nourished with the life-giving oxygen that we take in, it is also very appreciative of the exhalation that enables us to release that which we do not need. So investing as much energy in the inhalation as we do on the exhalation, and as much energy on the exhalation as we do on the inhalation. Mm. With each exhalation, can the body trust that it is safe, that it is taken care of? Can it trust that this is an oasis for self-care? And trust that every breath, every inhale and every exhale is for your highest good. for your physical body to be nourished, for your mental body to be clear, for your emotional body to feel and to love, to give and to receive, and for your spiritual body to connect to something greater than yourself, whatever that might be, whatever it is that makes the snowflakes fall and the grass grow. All that because we choose to pay attention to our breath. And then allow an intention to percolate to the surface of your awareness. An intention, an intention for this practice. And perhaps you have already created it simply by being willing to roll out your mat and be on it tonight or whenever it is that you're doing this practice. But perhaps distill it, make it a little clearer. The clearer the intention is, the more likely it is to be manifested. Repeat that intention to yourself three times. A clear, simple statement in the present tense. And then sharing in the welcoming sound of Om. Breathing in. Hmm. Yeah. 
So even though I do not have any music playing, you may wish to have some music playing where you are, uh, in your home. So feel free to put on whatever you like if that's something that helps you. So let's begin with circles. As we start to warm up the body, let the circles be kind of our first dive into muscle, bone, ligament, tendon relationship here. Breathing in, and half of that circle, breathing out on the other half. Inhale in one half, exhale in the other half. Or maybe even do this more in quarters, so slow down the circle and inhale in one quarter of the circle, exhale the other quarter, inhale and exhale. Maybe even switch directions. Relaxing the neck. So even though the focus is on the spine, what is the head doing? It's doing something, yes? Can we relax those neck muscles? Relax the neck muscles. Yeah. Coming a little more forward, a little lower, and then Take a moment to see if you can go a little further back, almost to the point that you sense that you may be about to fall, but you don't. Yeah, <laughs> and then to the other side. Yeah. Good. Mm. And then exaggerate the shoulders. So bring one shoulder up. So this may no longer look more like a circle. It may, maybe it's something else. Yeah, letting one shoulder come up as if it wanted to kiss the earlobe and then down and then the other shoulder. And as we do that, the body rocks side to side. Hmm. Good. And then release slowly and let your hands come in front. Prayer position. Interlacing the fingers and then tuck the chin in as the wrist stretch, creating a nice little cat curve here. And then inhale, sweep those interlaced fingers up towards the ceiling. Notice the space in the armpits and the triceps. Exhale, lower the arms. Neutral spine. Hands behind, guide the heart beyond the pelvis, look ahead. And then exhale, return to that cat curve. And repeat, inhaling up, exhaling out, hands behind, bring the heart beyond the pelvis, lots of space at the front of the body, exhale round. If it resonates with you, one more time, We're inhaling up, exhaling out. Nice, long, but neutral spine. Inhale, hands behind, guide the heart ahead of the pelvis. And then exhale, round. And letting that go. Mm. And then bring our attention to our legs. So legs out in front, feet roughly mat width apart. Resting on the hands or the elbows. Sometimes that feels better for some of us. Begin to arc the knees side to side. Inhaling up, exhaling to the other side. And you may offer the neck a little movement as well. So as the knees go to the right, the head turns to the left. Come back to center and switch. Yeah, again. Nice and easy. Hmm. So we're moving not just this, the lower back here, but also that connection between the head of the femur and the pelvis, promoting the formation of synovial fluid, the lubricant that helps our joints to be as mobile and functional as possible. Yeah. A couple more. Feel free to change your mind. If being on your elbows didn't work so well, come back onto the hands. If the hands 
are getting a little tired, come on to the elbows. Yeah. And then release. And as you release, let the legs come out in front. Let the toes shake out. Yeah. Let your feet flop side to side. It's a very kid-like thing to do, right? Look at my feet go. Isn't that cool? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is never a waste of time to act like a kid. <laughs> Holding on to the right foot and the right knee. So the left hand reaches for the foot. I'm doing mirror image here, but you feel free to hold whatever leg you'd like. So start to slowly circle the foot. Draw it around. Yeah, out, across, towards you. And in and out. So again, we're accessing the mobility of our hip on that right side. While this is happening, feel your sternum lift. And that creates a bit of a cue to bring our spine into a neutral position, nice and long. And then draw the leg across the front of the body and open up the other arm, creating a little bit of a twist here. Inhale, easing to the middle. Exhale, slowly opening. Eyes follow the hand, or they follow the foot, or they follow neither, and just look forward. What is better for your body right now? If holding the foot seems a little far, you can also just hold on to the leg underneath the knee. This may also be a function of just the length of our arms relative to our leg. For those of us who were blessed with long legs and shorter arms, it may be hard to reach the toes. So, just notice. Good. And then tuck that right foot back. Place the right hand on the hip. And circle the hip. Scoop it back, forward, and around. Slowly moving that hip, slowly feeling the shift, the circular shift that the sacrum is uh, moving through, that the tailbone is moving through. Or perhaps it's not circular, it's more elliptical or maybe even a figure eight. Oh, figure eight. What does that feel like if you do a figure eight with a tailbone or with a hip? <sighs> Too much thinking. So, no, no, let's not think too much. Let's just the hip, let the hip move freely. Yeah. And then diving down. Inhaling up. So we're diving over the left knee if you were doing your right hip. And repeat. Dive down. Lead with the crown. Relax the jaw. Sweep the chin away from the body. And up. Beautiful. Again, dive down. Notice the space between the shoulder blades and then sweep that chin forward. Glide the shoulders down. Notice the space in front of you. Mm. And then still on this side, let the right arm sweep in front of the body into a circle. And this is one aspect of this movement. Another possibility is to sweep the arm and come up onto the shin, lifting the hip. Another possibility is to come up all the way onto the knee and then come back down. So just see what's better for you. Hip down, hip partially up or up but more on the shin, or all the way up onto the knee, adjusting the left hand. So do a few more here, whatever variation you like. Breathing in on the way up, breathing out on the way down. Good. Mm. And then letting that go. Still on this side, extend the right leg out, or whatever leg is out there. Hands in front. And start to circle the torso. But this is similar to what we did earlier, except now we have this leg extended out, which means that we probably have a little bit more sensation in the inner thigh or a little bit of the hamstrings. If you flex, dorsiflex the ankle, you may find more sensation. 
If that you've got plenty, then just relax the foot. Let the head hang, relax the jaw. Hmm. And then still in this configuration of the legs, come up all the way, turning towards your extended leg. Hands on either side, relax the ankle. And as we lower the head, it's a kind of a dolphin dive, so similar to what we did earlier, but now we have a straight leg. So sweep the chin in the direction of the heel or the toes. Look ahead, look forward. And then tuck the chin in and dive down. And at some point, the back of your leg, the hamstrings and the calf, is probably, or are probably going to speak to you. I.e., a little sensation, a little stretch. As you come up, feel that stretch ease up a little. Yeah. There you go. And then when you're ready to release, lean back into your hands and shake it out. Yeah. So the whole sequence begun with holding on to the knee and the foot, I believe. It was a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> and start to circle it. Draw it around. Relax the jaw. Keep the shoulders down. And can the mind, I was referring to the different layers of being in our centering today, can we let the body move, yes, and the mind took on, take on the role of observer. Just watch from the inside out. Maybe close your eyes and can you observe how the head of your femur, the head of your thigh bone, is moving in the hip joint, in the hip socket? And then what are you feeling in this? The mind is the observer. What are you feeling about this? Are you feeling like it's a good thing? Are you feeling a little awkward? Are you feeling like it's a familiar thing to do? And if you'd like, moving on to the next piece, which is to bring the arm over to the opposite side as the leg comes across the body. And then bring it back, the lean in the center, and the head either moves with the arm, with the leg, or it does not move at all. It just stays facing forward. <sighs> what would be better for your body right now, for you? Coming into that exploration of breath. We feel the breath. Inhale into your belly, into your ribs, into your collarbones. Exhale. <sighs> yeah, there we go. Breathing in. Breathing out. One more, perhaps. And then feel that knee bend. Tuck the foot behind the hip. Place the hand on the hip and start to circle it. Ah. So this is still, we're still invested in that same hip that we were a moment ago when we were holding on to the leg and the knee or the foot and the knee. But it's from a different angle, a different perspective. So it's probably going to feel different. Hmm. Durga and Ujjayi breath. Durga meaning three-part inhalation. Ujjayi is a sound that we make that resembles ocean waves. Calm ocean waves. And then release the arm and start to bring it out into a circle or just a pendulum pattern. If you'd like, you can come up onto your shin and your knee and then down where the arm comes down. Or come up onto your knee all the way up and then come down on the inhale. Slowly. Ah. Breathing in, breathing out, 
Know that this is a different side, so it's going to have a different story for you. Every region of our body has a story. Our body stores memory, it stores experiences. And sometimes those are very good experiences, and sometimes they're not. And until we process them, they keep just coming to the surface. So be gentle and acknowledge what comes up. When you're ready, extend that leg out to the side and start to circle the body. Yeah. So either flex the ankle, dorsiflex the ankle, or just keep it relaxed. And at some point in this circle, the hip will actually lift off the floor. And that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Let it come up. Head hangs, jaw soft. Deep breaths. Be in your body. What is this leg saying to you? What is the story? Is there a memory that's being evoked here? These legs have walked, I am certain, many thousands of miles. They've taken many steps. And then ease up and slowly rotate towards the extended leg. Leading with the crown, dive down. You can keep the foot flexed, the ankle flexed or pointed. And dive down. Sweep the chin forward towards the toes on the inhalation. Exhale, diving down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Maybe one more time. Hmm, maybe pause for a moment. And then come back. Yeah, and then let that go. Legs come out in front. And again, shake it out. All right, a little more warmed up now than we were a few minutes ago. Okay, let's come to table pose. So table posture, knees under the hips. We're gonna do a little bit of kumbak, or what I call breath retention here. So breath retention is a way to increase or to create a little more body awareness as well as to focus our attention. So we're going to explore it in the context of puppy and cat. So make sure that your hands are in a place that feels right for you. So palms, fists, elbows, or if you've got some wrist supports, using those. So wrist supports are basically a piece of doweling two little supports in between, and the hands have a bit of space underneath. And if you're interested in these, just contact me and I'll see if I can get some to you. Okay? But what it does, what these do is they take off, they take the stress off the wrist. So uh, for those folks who are concerned about their wrist, this may actually be really helpful. Okay? So once you've established the variation that you wish for your body, for your hands, of course the elbows is also an option. Once that's established, Breathing in, lift your tailbone, drop the belly, and glide the shoulders away from the ears. So this is our classic puppy pose, sometimes called cow. And then exhale round, round the spine. So here's our cat. Breathing in, do this a few times before we get into the retention part. And exhale. Good. Breathing in, hold the breath in. And as you hold the breath in, pull your hands or elbows towards the knees. Keep the breath in. Give the body a chance to absorb the oxygen. Focus on the holding in. 
and then exhale hold out so breathe out every last molecule you possibly can hold out 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 empty 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 empty, empty. and hold the emptiness big cat curve hold the emptiness feel the emptiness relax the jaw hanging the head feel empty and then inhale lift the tailbone drop the belly glide the shoulders away from the ears lengthening the neck looking no further than your fingers hold full hold 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 full and empty stay empty can you find comfort in the emptiness is there ease here when there no longer is ease or comfort inhale and hold full hold empty hold until the holding no longer serves you until the mind wants to bolt out and then come back to neutral and just breathe normally and observe how that experience of holding the breath probably changed the energy flow in your body something probably has shifted this time the right leg goes back toes curl under under the foot press into the heel no holding right now this is just a, a gentle Breathing in, breathing out, stretching the toes. Adjust the hands, maybe on your elbows, instead of the hands or the fists. All right, and then hover the foot about a centimeter or two off the floor and start to make little circles with the right heel. It's like there's a wall behind you and you're, there's a piece of chalk on your heel and you're drawing circles on the wall with your heel. Feeling those circles getting a little bigger. A little bigger. Abdominal muscles supporting the spine. Glide the shoulders away from the ear. Soften the jaw. Look down at your fingers. Mm. And then hold still at whatever height you like. Glide the shoulders back from the ears. Reach forward to the crown. Strong foundation here through the hands or the elbows. Isometrically drawing them towards the back of the mat. Belly muscles, back muscles involved equally in supporting the spine. An option is to shift the weight to the right hand or elbow or fist and lift the left arm to the waist or to to check that the hips are level and you keep the hand here once you've established that the pelvis is level or bring the hand back to the mat or open it out to the left those right toes may be barely off the mat okay they don't have to be very high you may like the idea of pointing the toes instead of pressing into the heel glide the shoulder blades towards the tailbone and the lower wingtips of the shoulder blades get just a little closer to the tailbone. Keep looking down. A variation is to bend the back knee and reach back with your hand to grab the foot or place your hand on your waist. On the exhalation, lift the right leg up towards the ceiling. If it's holding on to the, or if the hand is holding on to the foot, then the left shoulder also gets a bit of a stretch. And play there. Breathing out, lift. Mm -hmm. Breathing in, lower. Mm. And then release, lower the arm, lower the leg, and step forward. Coming into runner stretch. Placing the heel under the knee and the hands on either side. 
Breathing in, halfway back. Exhale, lift the toes. And as you do so, feel your head hang to the inside of the leg. Not necessarily touching the leg, but just oriented to the inside. Inhale, halfway forward. Exhale, knee and heel line up. And slip into your own rhythm here. You can feel each individual step here. The three-part inhalation and the ocean-sounding exhalation. Moving from hamstrings to hip flexors. Next time we are forward, remain here and bring the hands to the forward knee. Glide the shoulders back from the ears and adjust the foot. We're going to come into knee down warrior. So just see if the foot prefers to maybe give yourself a little more width here. And then take your left arm, gently rotate as the thumb faces up towards the ceiling and opens up. Creating a long line, big stretch along the left side of the body here. Gaze straight ahead. If you'd like to deepen the stretch in the left hip flexor without collapsing this forward knee, so if anything, the foot goes more forward without doing this bit. This is what we're trying to avoid. That's actually quite dangerous for the knee. Okay, so we want the heel to be either under it or a little ahead. So, but if you want to deepen this left side, Ease forward, still the knee, safely position on the right leg. Another possibility is to take the right arm and lift it as well. You can interlace the fingers or not. The only thing about lifting the arm is it takes the attention away from that whole left iliopsoas line. So just see what's better for you right now. And then Ease both hands down, either to the knee or to the hips. Curl the back toes under, maybe bring in that forward foot just slightly. And decide if the body is prepared to actually come up into warrior. Knees up. Glide the shoulders down, press back into your heel. And then slowly pulse down a centimeter, up a centimeter, down a centimeter or two, up a centimeter. You may have chosen not to come up at all. Maybe there's a wall near you that you can use for support. That's fine. And then whether you have the knee up or down, angle the body forward, creating a line from your crown to your knee or to your heel. Arms either stay on the hips or they open out to the sides. Jaw relaxed. Can we lower the thigh, excuse me, the belly onto the thigh? Yeah. And then ease the hands to the floor or the elbows, if that's what you prefer. We're going to come to plank. Shift that right foot back, bring it back. Plank pose. We bring the hips lower than the shoulders. Glide the shoulders away from the ears, reach forth to the crown. Knees down or knees up, and hold as you look roughly to the end of your mat. <sighs> Breathe. An option here, coming into Chaturanga Dandasana, or maybe partly there. So if you're on your palms, start to bend the elbows towards the ribs. And then come back up. You can do this on the knees. Exhale, come down, elbows towards the ribs, and then come back up. So we're not opening the elbows out into a push-up kind of position. We're drawing them towards our ribs. So in doing so, the elbows bend towards the back. And then lower the knees if they're not already. Press back into child pose and rest. Hmm. Head down. Maybe rock the hips a little from side to side. If you like, you can have the knees a bit wider apart. Head either on the fists or on the floor.
Yeah. Notice the contrast from effort to non-effort. Many of us are so good at focusing on effort, but we forget that non-effort is just as important and just as valuable. All right. Prepare for the other side. So returning to table. This time the left leg is the one that initiates this whole sequence. Starting with the toes back, curled under the foot. Pay attention to what hand position serves you best. And then exhale, press into that left heel. Glide forward, inhale, glide back, exhale. And just make a, a little note of where the sternum is. In other words, try not to exacerbate or to let the sternum drop too much so that space between the shoulder blades becomes more like a valley. So try to flatten that area out a little bit. Without rounding the shoulders, however. So it means that we are a little bit more aware of the musculature at the front of the body rather than just letting gravity take over. Mm. You may be finding that you're getting a little warm now. We do not need to be moving quickly in order to build heat. Heat that is created internally, that is created through awareness of breath, awareness of movement and breath coordination, is heat that is incredibly healing, incredibly nurturing, because it's being created from the inside out. Very purifying to do that. And then hover the toes and start to make little circles with that left heel. Notice the stability of the right thigh. Right? So just uh, be aware of how the right hip may want to move out to the side. Try not to let it. Keep the hip over the right knee as the left heel is doing its thing. Isometrically guiding the hands or the elbows towards the back of the mat to assure that we have length in our neck. Maybe lifting that leg a little higher, making the circle a little bigger. Soften the jaw, relax the muscles of the face. And then hold the leg still. Doesn't have to be very high. It can even be on the ground for that matter. Bringing the right hand to check that the hip is level. And if it is too level, then the arm either comes back to the mat or reaches out to the side. Keeping the shoulder blades away from the ears. Abdominal muscles strong. Shoulders back. Gazing down. Or to maybe even close your eyes. Another possibility is to bend the knee. Place the hand either on the waist or the buttocks. Or grab the foot. So now there is no focus on keeping the hips level. That left hip will be higher than the right. And that's fine. Breathing out on your way up with the foot. Inhale down. The one awareness here that sometimes creeps up is that the knee will want to go out to the side. Try not to let it. Keep it straight down the middle and up. Yeah. Good. Hmm. Gradually letting that go. Feel free to stay longer if you like. And stepping forward. Adjust the knee. Yeah. Hands on either side, breathing in halfway back. Exhale all the way back, lifting the toes. Head hangs. Breathing in. Exhale, knee and heel line up. Good. Breathing in, breathing out. Halfway forward, inhale, knee and heel line up to exhale.
and then remaining forward, adjusting the foot and bring the hands to the knee. Glide the shoulders down from the ears, looking straight ahead. The left hand may remain, or maybe hang to the side, it's up to you. And then the right arm rotates with the thumb oriented upward so that we can easily move the shoulder and lift it up as high as possible. So now we have really noticeable length in the right side of the body in the, the hip flexor area. Keeping the thumb back, gazing ahead. The tailbone tucks underneath slightly. This, this is definitely a back extension. So a little bit of tucking the tailbone just to make sure that we have the space into which the back can extend. And an option here is to lift the other arm as well. Glide the shoulders down. Just an option. Maybe lifting the arm is not a good idea, in which case, why would you do it? Yeah, V is actually a really nice position. So is Goddess. That can also be really sweet. And then bring the hands to the knee or to the hips. <coughs> Back toes curl. Adjust mm -hmm. the forward foot. And this may be great. Or slight shift forward and lift the back knee. We are now in warrior two. No, we are not. We are in warrior one. Warrior two may be coming later. Maybe. <laughs> Glide the shoulders down. Arms stay or they open. And then lean forward like your body was a ramp. Arms can stay in front if you're feeling particularly strong here and you want to just hang out there, that's fine. Or they point back. Soften the muscles of the face. Deep breaths. And this time we're going to go into standing angle. So turn towards the right keeping the legs wide apart, but adjust the feet so they're pointing a little out, forward and out. And the hands either come to the floor or they rest on the thighs. Yeah. Okay, whatever you like. In a moment, I'm going to come up to goddess. All right. But for now, just feel that, that stretch. And then start to bend the knees. And make little circles with your tailbone. Hmm. Yeah, maybe shift a little from side to side. Keep the knees bent in the direction of the toes and guide the body slowly up into vertical as the arms open into goddess pose. Yes, there we go. So in goddess pose, the elbows are a little lower than the shoulders, yeah, and the hands a little wider than the elbows. Nice symmetrical pose, yeah. Another name for this pose is victory squat. Yes, that's right. It's like, here I am. Um, classically, the palms, some people like to do them facing forward. Some folks like to have them away. I really prefer the method of having my hands face me because it gives me that sense of feeling like, I, like I'm basking in my own energy here. It's like, yeah, I'm at home in my body. But play with it. See how it changes when your palms face out something shifts, right? Or when they face up, like you're taking in something from the heavens, right? Or when the wrists bend and they face down. The hand position completely changes the feeling in the rest of the body. Right? So our extremities are powerful in terms of how we want to feel. They're also really powerful tools to help us to release things we don't want. Like if you shake out your hands, shake, 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 like it really releases stored up stuff, right? And then come back and hold and see how that's different. Yeah. All right. Ease out into straight arms, straight legs, lowering the arms, and then come into the mountain with toes and heels, toes and heels, toes and heels. Yeah. Feel 
find your mountain, mountain pose. So mountain, our fundamental standing posture, taking the heel of one foot, pressing it or touching at the arch, and then pivot on the big toe mound, and that's our mountain width for our unique body. Okay. I'm going to come to tree pose for mountain. So palms drawn towards the body. I'm going to explore tree pose with a few variations, so just be open to playing. Okay. So shift the weight slowly to your left foot. Gaze straight ahead. And as that happens, the standing knee has a little bit of give to it. Okay, a little pulse in that, in that left knee. And the right leg comes forward and then slowly up. Okay. Standing hip draws into the midline. Rather than going for a little trip off to the side, comes into the midline. Without locking the knee. There's a little bit of a bend there still. And then what if that right foot would have come up to below the knee or maybe to above the knee? Gliding the shoulders down, reach up to the crown. Chin is parallel to the floor. Maybe some help from the hand would be helpful. Yeah. Standing hip stays in. For those of you that want to take this into half lotus, let the foot turn and rest on the upper left thigh with the knee now pointing down. Okay, so see if that's within your scope of practice. And if it is, fine. If it's not, then of course it's not. Wherever the leg ultimately ends, or ends up for now, the arms then follow with their version of branches. Okay. Reach up to the crown. A variation for those that are on half lotus is to bring the left hand down to grab the foot and the other arm behind to grab the left elbow. So it's a slightly different tree here. Okay. Explore. Balance. We're looking for balance. And balance is really a relative term. Because we can be balanced in the process of moving. We can be balanced in the process of being still. Right? And balance is in a constant state of being redefined. Some of us may have come out of it altogether and you're doing something else. It's great. To release when you come into stargazer. So in stargazer, that foot that was up, that right leg comes ahead. I'll just turn here. And as it comes ahead, the feet straighten out. The distance between the two feet is roughly one step, like, a, like an average walking step, a little stroll step down the road, or down the sidewalk. So straightening out the feet, if you want a bit more challenge, let the feet be on one line, so that the left foot is directly in front of the right. And if balance is a little more tenuous right now, then have the feet a little wider. And then as the hands come behind, they're actually going to come behind to remind us to tilt the tailbone under. Okay. So tilt the tailbone under and draw the floor of your pelvis up internally towards the sternum. So you have the, the, the perineal muscles engaged here. Right. And as that happens, now we have space into which we can extend up and back, bringing the eyes roughly a meter or so above the horizon. And the shoulder blades slide underneath the heart. It's like they're trying to scoop underneath the heart to pick it up. The distance that we had at the beginning when the chin and the ch uh, between the chin and the chest is the same as we have now. Right, so there's the, the angling or the, the extension is coming exclusively from the back, not the neck. Maintain that awareness of the shoulder blades scooping up the heart. And let the weight be primarily on the back foot to the point that the forward heel may even come up slightly, or not. Shoulder blades keep gliding down, down, down. If the hands don't want to stay on the back for whatever reason, you can interlace your fingers without losing the support and integrity of the pelvic floor. The tailbone keeps scooping under, trying to point towards the front of your space. And then as we shift back up momentarily to standing, the forward knee starts to bend, so your right leg starts to bend. Reach back with the left toes. 
left toes. Reach back with the, with the back toes. Yeah. And as we do this, the forward knee is now quite bent. Folding at the thighs. And maybe lift your back foot, arms out for balance. Pressing into the heel of the back leg. Crown is forward. And for those that want to play with balancing half moon, from your balancing stick, or sometimes called warrior three, let the, if your left leg is forward, it's the left arm that comes down. If your right leg is forward, the right arm comes down. And then lift the opposite arm. Keep pressing into the heel of the extended leg. Lots of bend in the supporting leg. Breathe and feel the spaciousness. As gracefully as you can muster, ease back. Return to mountain. Place your hands on your belly. Feel your breath. And thank your body. Feel the breath in your belly. Mm. Breath in the belly. And then gradually open your eyes and prepare for the other side. So return to our prayer position. Prayer position is a really soothing calming position for the body. We call this a mudra. Mudra just means a symbol. And in this particular mudra, when the pads of the fingers come together and the thumbs come together and then they touch the, the sternum area, that's the thymus gland is just behind there. And when that happens, there's a, actually a measurable effect on the parasympathetic nervous system, the nervous system that, the part of our nervous system that enables us to be calm and to relax. So just standing here. So this is one of the reasons why this position is often used for contemplative practices, because it helps to calm us down. Yeah, all right. Other side. Weight shifts to the left leg, if that's the one you didn't do before. And lift your other leg. Yeah. Draw relaxed. Shoulders down, reach up to the crown, yeah. See where that foot wants to go. Does it want to come up? Whatever side you did, whatever side it was, maybe you find yourself doing the same one twice. Perhaps that's what your body needs. So there's nothing wrong with that, <laughs> okay? Whatever feels like the right thing for you. Hmm, is there the option for half lotus? Maybe there is, maybe there is not. Standing hip stays standing, reach up to the crown, sternum reaching to the ceiling, shoulders reach down. There's this constant interplay between the shoulders and the crown. The crown wants up, the shoulders want down. Right? And then our branches. Remembering that more is not better, it's just different. You might want to use a wall, if you like. If you have a wall nearby, you can stand with your back towards it. <laughs> or find the wall with one of your hands momentarily. <sighs> yeah. And as you feel ready, ease slowly down and step ahead with that foot. The foot that was up now steps in front. The important thing here is to have the feet straight because if we open up the feet, I'm facing you and I open up my feet, I'm kind of angled here, then it's going to create a misalignment in the SI joint. So we're trying to make sure that that's not the case. So let the feet be straight. As I said before, they can be in one line or a little wider. And then, so at this point, the weight is more or less evenly distributed. A little more on the back foot, but it, it's not significant. But as soon as we start to tilt the pelvis, here we go. Most of the weight now comes onto your back foot. The other image I really like here is, is pretend your pelvis is a bowl of soup. 
and the, that, that soup is, it's just the right temperature, so it's not going to burn you, but there's too much of it. So you want to pour some of it out, and you're going to pour it behind you. It's like you want to pour it on your left heel, or your, sorry, your back heel. Right? Pour it back. In that pouring, the pubic bone is going to come up a little bit, the tailbone is going to scoop underneath, shoulder blades glide under the heart, <sighs> nice long neck. Observe the distance between the chin and the chest. Breathe deeply. Lots of breath here. Most of the weight on the back foot. Mm. And then the gradual transition as we shift the weight now to the front leg. And now that front knee is going to be quite bent. Arms open out to the side. So the toes, the back toes, start to crawl back. And some of us will keep the toes down. Some of us will lift them. The upper body is lowering roughly to the height of the hip or less. doesn't have to be that low. Reach back through the fingertips. And imagine there's a helium balloon attached to that back leg. Just floating your leg up into our warrior three or our balancing stick. And if you'd like to layer on half moon for this, Whatever leg is forward, the corresponding arm comes down. Mm. I'm on a squeaky spot on my wooden floor here. Reach down with those fingers, reach up with the other arm. If you're exploring, you're balancing half moon. Breathe. And then to release, ease slowly back to your mountain. This time, hands on your heart, closing your eyes. Deep breaths. Mm. Notice the strength in your legs, the open heart, the deep breath. Mm. Begin to ease your way back down to seated, nice and slow. All the way down to seated. As you come down, throw your legs back in front, right to side, preparing for seated twist. Seated twist with a little bit of variations. So in this variation of a seated twist, taking your right leg, bring it in towards you, either have the foot on the inside of the leg or on the outside. Now the other possibility for some of us is to tuck in that left leg and bring the foot on the outside. Now the only thing that I ask is that if you're going to do that variation is that the sitting bones are still equally in contact with the floor. Okay, so either the knee bent or straight, but both sitting bones are sitting. And then the, if the right knee is up, whatever knee is, is bent, corresponding hand comes and meets it. That's the closed version. If you want to do the open version, it's the other side. That's the corresponding hand, opposite hand, I'm sorry. So the opposite hand means it. Or if you want to go to the open version, corresponding hand open. So whatever hand it is stays on the knee. The opposite hand to that, yeah, the other hand, comes up and we follow it with our eyes. So in my case, I'm doing the closed version. So exhale, ease the body into a twist by following the thumb or the fingers of that floating hand. Breathe in on the exhalation, see if you can go a little further, and just as your peripheral vision loses sight of the hand, it starts to float down, to either lightly touch the floor, and I emphasize the word touch, because it's not going to bear weight, it's just going to touch, or to wrap around the waist. Inhale, tall, sitting bones rooted, heart lifted. Exhale, right shoulder blade comes around, right collarbone stretches like an elastic. Breathing in, exhale, bringing that, that um, ribcage around. If you're doing the open version, it's the exact same thing, except it's the other side, the other collarbone, and the other ribcage, or the other side of the ribcage. Whatever side it is, let yourself be fully present to it. 
Both sitting bones are still sitting. Still sitting. Deep breaths. Mm. And the release here is a little bit different, is to lift the arm all the way up. Again, totally up to the shoulder if it wants to do that. And as it comes all the way up, comes over towards the front and let that top, the foot of the top knee get a little closer to the opposite hip and find your way forward. So if the foot is tucked under, then the knee stack. If the leg is straight, the knees are trying to stack. Okay. And the head moves towards the floor. So if the leg is straight, this turns more into a hamstring calf personal assist. If the leg is tucked under, then it becomes more of a, just a hip stretch on both sides here. Head is down, relax the back of the neck. Mm. You may even find yourself resting your chin on your knee. Mm. Breathe. Sweet breath. When you're ready to continue on, pressing the hands down into the mat and guide your way up. All the way up. Lean back into the hands to give space to free up the leg or the legs. Shake the mat, maybe a little arcing side to side. The other side. Either extend the leg or tuck it in, bringing the foot either on the inside of the leg if it's straight or on the outside. Okay. Decision time. You don't have to do the same thing on this side that you did on the other side. Okay. All right. Either the opposite hand reaches for the knee or the same hand reaches for the knee, depending on what direction you wish to go. Lifting the arm tall. Exhale, start to gradually follow that thumb. Yeah, breathe in tall, a little pause, exhaling, coming around a little further. And as you lose sight of the hand, let it drift down to rest and lightly touch the floor, bearing no weight at all, or wrap it around to rest on the waist, keeping the orientation of the eyes. Maybe the eyes are closed, but keeping your face oriented towards the side and the back. Imagine that the collarbone is elasticized. And with each exhalation, the elastic gets a little stretchier, a little more length in your elastic. Twisting postures are extremely beneficial for the maintenance of a healthy spine, for flexibility, for strength. Mm, they're also very calming on the nervous system. Inhale whenever you're ready. Begin to drift back, all the way back. Tucking the foot a little closer to your hip with a knee bent or straight, with a lower leg bent or straight. Knees as stacked as possible as the body starts to lower. Mm. Decreasing the distance between the chin and the knee or the nose and the knee. Uh. What is your body telling you now? Through our practice, through our intentional practice, we endeavor to have every corner of our body, every cell in our body, have our attention. Mm -hmm. 
the help of the hands, begin to gradually ease back up. All the way up. Leaning back into your hands. Legs come out in front. We'll tap. And let's come onto our backs. Hugging the knees. Making circles with the knees. Massage the lower back with these knee circles. Be in your body. Notice the physical body, the shell, that, the container that holds who we are in this world as far as being able to travel it. Notice your thoughts, your mental body, your mind. Perhaps a little calmer now than it was an hour ago. Notice your feelings. How are you feeling? Yoga practice helps us to peel away the layers and the shells that we build in order to move through our days. And sometimes they help us and many times they don't like an armor that we need to put down at the end of the day. Shedding our armor. Is there any other movement or posture you'd like to do before coming into guided relaxation? Any final position, any final posture? Maybe there's a, an inversion or a little bridge or some pelvic tilts. What would feel like the perfect completion for your unique practice? and observe relaxation posture weaving its way in, and perhaps it already has. And that's fine. But if it has not, consider it. Consider finding a position where all effort melts away. All the doing is done. The arms rest either by the sides of the body or perhaps on your belly or one on your belly, one on your heart. You may have chosen to place a pillow or a bolster under the knees. That might help some of us to make sure the back is a little more relaxed. Or you may have chosen to have a blanket over your body to provide some warmth. The body will cool as it just rests. And once the position has, of relaxation has been established, feel the eyes close. Take a deep breath, and on the exhalation, imagine your body to be at least double the weight. At least double the weight. Acknowledge the legs, <clears throat> the feet, and the toes. Let these legs, these feet, and these toes relax. Bring your attention to your arms your hands, fingers, and thumbs. Let these arms, and hands, 
and fingers and thumbs relax. Bring your attention to your sacral area, to the lower back. And imagine that area to be like a raindrop or a snowflake that has landed on the ground and is absorbed into the soil, into the earth. Melting, becoming one with the earth. Visualize the area of the mid-back. Once again, a raindrop or a snowflake. Feel it land in the warmth of the earth. Melting, being absorbed, giving you connection, relationship all that is. Notice the area of the upper back between the shoulder blades all the way to the base of the skull. Letting that area, like a raindrop or a snowflake, land on soft earth and be absorbed. Notice the head. Parts, part of the head that is touching the mat. And like a snowflake or a raindrop, feel the head dissolve. Let it land and be supported. And dissolve. Be one with the earth. Relaxing into knowing that you have all the support that you need. Just ask for it. The earth below you, the sky above you, and the sun that shines, even when there are clouds. Quietly repeating to yourself, I am healthy, I am strong, I am relaxed. You may wish to remain here beyond my invitation to move. If you do choose to move, I invite you to deepen your breath and release it with an audible sound. And as you do so, Begin to notice your toes and your fingers 
as they start to wiggle. The hands opening and closing, and the head rolling from side to side. Movement becomes a little bigger as arms and legs start to stretch, to unravel, like a kitten that just, or a cat that's just come out of a long nap. Big stretch. Rolling on to one side and pause there for a moment whenever you are ready. Maybe you need to hug the knees first. Maybe that would feel really good. And as you find yourself on your side, reflect on your practice. Reflect on something about it that you might want to remember for your tomorrow or something that you recognize that you're leaving behind that you no longer need. So just take a few seconds to pause and reflect on that. And then find your way back to seated. I'm sitting for a moment. Breathing in and reaching the arms above you. Sound of Om, draw them to your heart. Shanti, Shanti, peace, peace in our hearts, peace in our homes, peace in our planet. Jai Bhagwan. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being you. Till next time. <laughs>